even after I, I checked papers at Civils Daily and I developed the sense of what's a good answer and what's a bad answer and what should not be done. So when it was my turn to actually write, start writing answers to the mains, I was still not able to like completely execute it. So these small, small things I picked up and I also picked up what should not be done. Don't write too much. Be very precise about what you're trying to do. And if you do not meet the demand of the question, you might as well not attempt that question. So when I started checking the copies, that is when I I looked at answers from a person who is checking those answers, not as a person who is answering those answers. Uh, so that was a major, major shift and a useful shift. Now, so when you came and you, you know, you became a part of the mains team, and I'm sure you saw a lot of question answer copies as well and you had your own framework to assess and allocate marks what are usually the blind spots or the pitfalls for uh, an immature guy or a very beginner person versus mature can you spend some time in this like this is how you should check the copy and how we used to evaluate okay. so when i started checking the copies that is when i i looked at answers from a person who is checking those answers not as a person who is answering those answers uh, so that was a major, major shift and a useful shift to, you know, understand the answers. So, like, I I was seeing, like, when somebody was writing too much in, you know, unnecessary paragraph formats, where it's not needed, I never, I didn't feel like giving them marks. So, okay. and when somebody was introducing well with uh, short and good introductions, when they're concluding with some punchlines in the conclusion, it automatically motivated me to give about more marks there. And it's something as simple as, you know, when somebody fills the entire paper without leaving any spaces, that kind of told me that, okay, this person knows what they're doing, you know, that kind of. So these small, small things I picked up and I also picked up what should not be done. Don't write too much. Be very precise about what you're trying to do. And if you do not meet the demand of the question, you might as well not attempt that question. Okay. Why? So, uh, usually people say that attempt as much as you can, but yeah, you think it gives but, a bad impression? Yes. But uh, so when you are attempting an answer, a question, and you're not addressing the demand, it tends to irritate the checker. <laughs> If you know a, the demand, okay, just don't write anything, respect the person who's checking your copy. They're not fools sitting there. So this is how you used to evaluate copy that yeah. this is this is our standard. Uh, okay. okay. Interesting. Okay. And and what about what about frameworks and putting those in place, the toolkits which we usually talk about? Uh, so like all the basic stuff that all the toppers keep talking about. Which, are, uh, which people actually find it difficult to execute, like using mm. flowcharts, using diagrams, using in good writing, good introductions, good conclusions. Uh, so these uh, examples, like lots of examples, and uh, you know, committees, articles. So I realized you you can. We think everybody wants to do these things in the exam, but somehow they cannot do it on the actual day. That's because they're not practicing enough. To be able to do that on the final day, so makes sense. Uh, so we need to like practice a lot, like write a lot of papers and see what if if you are able to do what you want to do. So yeah. I practiced adequately so that when I was writing on the final day, I knew what I was going to write in those papers, and I was on an autopilot mode, like mm. to that mm. point. So I practiced till that point where I could be very comfortable, no matter what they ask, I knew how to address the demand and write a decent answer. So the mes muscle memory kind of would kick in and, yeah. you know, would you Definitely. Like? I strongly believe in that. Okay. And you did go through all the PYQs of mains and prelims previous years, uh, even though you took an a different optional anthro, you did it by the books and by the basics, right? Okay. What you just said right now, right? We imagine because the knowledge is everywhere. I mean, all the information is all around all YouTube. This video would also go and this would be much more practical. But again, this would be like, hey, you should do like this. Uh, I want you to tell me what all things you found difficult to execute, even when you knew them. So and so so that it eases the guilt for the Gentile at large. Yeah. So 
uh, even after I, I checked papers at Civils Daily and I developed the sense of what's a good answer and what's a bad answer and what should not be done. So when it was my turn to actually write, start writing answers to the mains, I was still not able to like completely execute it. So I have a friend who already cleared the exam and he was kind enough to like point out at my paper and show your answers are bad. <laughs> You really okay. need to be changing them. You know that you have to change them. Then why are you not doing it? Okay. And then he pinpointed and showed it to me. See, at the same point, you could have written it that way. Mm. So when somebody pointed it out very clearly, mm. you know, criticized my answers, I mm. think criticized, but also showed me the way to do the it. Way to go. Because yeah. even in my previous items, I had a lot of criticism on my uh, answers especially geography answers, but I did not have a way out as to how could I have, I have done it better. So I think this was difficult, but uh, again, with sheer practice, writing very high number of exams, like mock exams, it, it helped me like gradually, gradually develop. Makes sense, makes sense. I mean, the structured criticism kind of helps yes. uh, where you should were you also doing this when you were evaluating the papers yes, yes. like Definitely. giving an alternate i i remember one of the uh, uh, copies that i was checking the person aspirant he always complained about uh, whoever was checking the papers <laughs> so he would call me up and then we would have a discussion and then i would try to give him the my point of view as a check yeah. so and yeah. then eventually he understood what he was trying to say and he was also like okay this is how we can go about it Oh, makes sense. That's the, quite a journey then when you when you were behind the scenes, right? 